Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 20th, 2013, and it is actually 8.01. I thought we were going to be super late. Today is the Kane and Kale Show, episode 94, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, King Lafferty, and today we are going to be drawing sexy ladies. For those of you who saw the awesome advertisement on the Facebook, we are going to be jumping into that. But before we get into the tutorial, we need to take a stroll down Lovely Lane. <laughs> I made the funniest face right before that thing changed over. Uh, where we have some amazing submissions, as usual, from people. We got sexy ladies as well. Maybe that's why I'm so inspired to, to draw sexy ladies today, because we have a plethora of uh, mildly clothed, or uh, I, I don't even know what that would be called. Mildly? Can you say that? Mildly clothed? <laughs> it wouldn't be modestly. But then we also have this awesome drawing coming in from Jose. This really, really caught my eye. Just like the lighting on this, like just the, the simple shapes and the capturing of the colors and everything. Good job to Jose. Keep it up. I'm sure your grandpa really liked that. So that's really cool. All righty, people. Last announcement. I'm going to be going to the Salt Lake Comic Con. September 5th through 7th in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm going to be appearing in Artist Alley, along with Emma, and helping to spread the good word about free comics for everybody, and who doesn't love free comics? So, yeah, go there, and we can shake hands and snuggle. Alrighty, guys, so now let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. Today we're going to be featuring this picture of... This is supposed to be Kate, who's Emma's sister, uh, her sexy older sister, in what appears to be a French maid's outfit. Because who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love that? It's a hallmark of the sexy lady. And today, what we're going to be learning about is flow. Flow is a big thing that I want to be talking about today. Just how I decided to go ahead and put this picture together. We're actually going to strip all of her clothes off and look at her naked, sketched body, which I know is why you all showed up. And I'm going to talk about some things that I really like to keep in mind when I'm drawing a lady's body. In fact, I'll just give you a, a taste of that right there. There it is. <gasps> There you go. Now, if that's what you came for, you can go now. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be examining the body. I'm going to be telling you guys about a couple things I like to keep in mind, as well as flow, because I am an avid believer and teacher of flow. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. And first thing I want to talk about is the flow of, like, how I started with this, right? In fact, the best way to do this might be just to draw it over again, right? Just as an idea, uh, or just to show you my process of going through this thing. So I knew when I first started this, I wanted to have, I wanted to draw this girl, right? And I wasn't really thinking too much that it was going to be like Kate or anybody really, but I was actually inspired because of the cheerleaders that I was drawing in the side comic, right? They have this head shape where it's just kind of like an almond, right? And they have their eyes like just kind of stuck on right there, and then they just have their faces. But I like the fact that their their heads are just really, really super simple. And I kind of wanted to experiment with that and see if I could come up with something. So let's go ahead, and this is just kind of quickly showing you some of the thought process that went into doing it. So the first thing that I knew I wanted to do was... I wanted to have her head kind of tilted back, right? So, you know, I just draw this line, the center line, right across. So I knew that I wanted her eyes to be kind of situated like that, okay? And then I knew the nose would go here, and then the mouth would be kind of like that, okay? So, but one thing that I always teach is try your best to not draw the body off of a head, right? And even though that's kind of what I did here, you'll notice how I keep the the style very very simple. I'm not going in here and like zooming in and then figuring out okay this is gonna be an eye and so we need to put in all this detail right and just like figure everything out. I don't go into that part yet because we may end up having to redraw the head. It might not work from this angle or something else might come. A terrible tragedy may happen. But regardless I do like to kind of start with that in a very simplified style because I know that I mean when you're drawing when I'm drawing like ladies, I really like to focus a lot on the face and the eyes and just the expression because I think there's a lot of character and just like emotion in that. So I, this is a rare case where I will start with the head. But at any rate, we'll go ahead and move on into the body. So one thing that I really like to do, and this is called country pasta. Country pasta is a beautiful, delicious dish. It's one of my favorite things in the world. 
And that has to do with, is an art term that has to do with separating the, the plane of like the chest, the, the torso, with the hips, right? You like juxtapose it. So say the, the chest is coming down like this, right? So then the hips, rather than following the straight line and going down like that, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick it back like this, right? So our hips are going to come back like that. And the, the legs are going to go out like that. And this is looking really, really silly. But this is just to illustrate a point, how I got started, right? And so you can very quickly see how these flow lines are starting to come in, right? She's got these nice flow lines going on. And then I think what I ended up doing was I actually grabbed her head. I lassoed it, right? Because that is the magic of Photoshop. I actually just broke her head off and moved it a little bit more over towards her arm, right? So it kind of goes like... From, from this, whatever, so it's like kind of like nudged over a little bit more, it's a little more cute. So stuff like that. I'm messing around with just a bunch of shapes uh, at this stage in the game and again just paying attention to flow and what the heck is going on? Why, why are you not erasing? Hello? Did I just, okay, there we go. Go it! And so then I'll just start kind of erasing guidelines, just making sure everything checks out. All that good stuff. And when in doubt, I really like to think about, I like to think about the anatomy that's happening within this character, right? But then I also really like, I also really like simplifying things, right? So let's go ahead and go from this and let's go to the actual body that I used and drew stuff on top of, which is right here. Okay. So, a couple things that I want to talk about here is, this is, here's a couple really handy tricks that I like to think about. A, when you're drawing an arm up like this, you'll notice, even if you look at the way that it affects your own body, when you raise your arm, it raises this pec muscle, right? And if you're a girl, it raises your boob. So, it's very, very important if you draw an arm up like this on a girl. Uh, let me go ahead and pick a darker color. If you draw an arm up like this, you want to think about the shoulder coming down right here, and then the pec muscle is actually existing like right here, right? So the other pec muscle is right over here, and then the boob just like lays on top of it, obviously. But you want to make sure that you draw that actually happening, draw the boob actually being raised, because it will have a lot, it'll be way more realistic as opposed to, because this is a common mistake that I used to make all the time. It's like I draw the arm up, right and I wouldn't take into account how it raised the rest of the muscles and then I just like draw the boobs on the same plane and, and it would look weird you know it just wouldn't look very I don't know like uh, I, I don't know how to what word am I looking for it wouldn't look believable it wouldn't look believable so please for all that is holy for the love of all that is holy please raise those boobs when you raise your arm okay that's one. That's rule number one. Second off is I want to show you guys a cool sketch that I got when I was doing some life drawing. And this is basically what I refer to every time I'm drawing an armpit, right? This right here. Okay, so check it out. So A, the, the boobs are getting raised like you can see here, right? But then what's really cool is this is what I was interested in. The, the, the interlockings and just the way that the muscles move around when your arm is up like this, like the armpit muscle, right? Because that's kind of like a, it's like an abyss of like enigmatic knowledge, right? You're like, what is happening within here when people raise their arms, right? Because you don't really see it that much, and much less do you study it. But luckily, I had the chance to do that. So yeah, if you want to, you can go ahead and just uh, screen cap that if you want my exact drawing. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, really go out of focus there. And hopefully it comes back. Okay, that's cool. I usually turn off autofocus before I start this thing. I don't know why it keeps coming back. I don't know why it keeps coming back. But in essence, let me go ahead and show you what I talk about, uh, or what, I, what I'm talking about when I say I like to simplify things. So basically what's happening here with the armpit is the rest of the pec is coming up right here. And then you have the shoulder muscle, which is going to wrap around right here. That's like the deltoid wrapping around. And then here is the back, right? This is where the other side of the shoulder comes in, basically. And then you have the arm coming up like that. So basically this 
area right here, this is the armpit area. This is what you're seeing as the armpit. But the way that I go about reducing that or just simplifying that is I cut it down to just a couple lines. Because obviously when skin is laying over top of the muscle, you're not going to see every single exact muscle like that. So rather what I do is I just kind of bring it up right here I leave that one little line right there. Then I create another little line that kind of comes out like that. It's almost like feathered. You notice I kind of just feathered it like that. And that makes a nice, that makes a really nice uh, shape for me. I really like the way that that looks. And then you can go ahead and uh, build this off right here. And this is what I'm talking about with the subtlety. Once you know where the muscles are, are like existing, then you can come through and be like, okay, I know the back is here, but then rather than just like continuing this line up to the elbow, which is up here, notice how I kind of kicked it out a little bit right here, just a little bit right there. And that is simulating the other muscle. That's simulating the back of the, the shoulder, right? And once you learn about little things like that, and again, I'm still learning about all the subtleties in the, in the human body and just stuff like that, but that's really where the magic kind of comes in. Another thing that I did up here is when I ended up drawing the rest of the elbow or the rest of the arm, I actually drew this little bump right here. And what that is, is it's this bone right here, this little bone uh, on the inside of your arm because I knew I was going to have her other arm coming up like this, like that. And so I drew that little bone right there and it looks better in the actual drawing, but regardless, you know what I'm talking about. Drawing that little... A little bone. That is your funny bone, by the way. And then I just draw the hand. And I really like to draw hands like basically like, I don't know, like claws or something. <laughs> I just like, I draw hands very, very simply. Like I draw the thumb and I draw the pinky. And then oftentimes I like connect, I just connect the rest of the fingers into one giant shape. Because oftentimes I find that that just looks really nice. And it's a really easy way for me to get a gesture out of a hand. You see that? Even just with these shapes coming off here, you can see the gesture that would be in that hand. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Okay, so let's see. Now that we've discussed armpits and booby raises, let me talk another let me talk about another really, really cool trick that I like to do. And that also has to do with drawing boobs. So you're going to get a lot of boob tips today. So something that I really, really like to do when I'm drawing the Gonzagas is I like to, you notice I, I draw this little line right here, right? I draw this little line coming off there. So it's like, here's the boob, and then there's that line. And what that is, is it's the indentation of the rib cage, right? Or just like the muscle that comes off of the rib cage. And I really like to draw that little line there because it's almost like, like if you if you look at pictures of like you know the freaking uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit models and stuff like that, you know like I study, then you'll notice that when these people have like these, it's like they don't even have to have super toned bodies, but girls' stomachs have a tendency to almost split into two parts, right? It's almost like it concaves in, like it goes out and then it comes in like towards the abs. And here, let me draw a line to demonstrate that. So it goes out like that, and it kind of comes in, and it'll kind of bounce out again, you know. So it goes in. And out like that you know and that might be a little bit exaggerated but you know what I'm saying so that's what that line there represents it just represents the beginning of that and then by ending it by ending it like that it kind of allows the rest of the stomach to kind of just kind of round out like that you know what I'm saying and it looks really really nice I I think it looks really sexy and that's why I added into my lovely ladies okay so the next thing I want to talk about is just the principle that I like to remember when I'm drawing torsos on girls and, and guys too, I guess, but you know, most of the time I'm drawing girls. Um, and that is almost like this three shape type of theory, right? Because if we continue this line down, you know, you get the, the rib cage, right? So the rib cage kind of comes up like that. But then I like to think about this shape, right? This is a shape that I think a few people could really benefit from. And it's basically like the, the abdomen, right? This area down here, this area right here, it's like a, this is the second shape. And then the third shape comes off of it, right? And then you get the hips. The hips extend off of the abdomen. And I think that looks really, really, really nice when you do that. So then when you simplify it, you know, you take away those lines, 
And you can still see that happening. It's like one, two, and there's a little thing right there, and then three. And I think that looks really, really nice. So try it out, mess around with it. Again, this is my style, so it might work for you, it might not. Um, now let's talk about the sexy line, right? The sexy line is the line of the leg, right, that comes up and meets the hips. And what I've found that makes a really good sexy line is to think about, basically, like I've talked about drawing uh, girls' bodies before, and when I draw just like really, really, like a really, really quick version of it, it's just like an hourglass shape. And then the way that I start to put the legs on is I just draw, almost like it was a swimsuit, right? And it comes to the crotch, and then I draw the legs out like that, right? And what I really like about this line right here is that is the line where the leg bends, right? So if this leg is bending out this way and you think about that swimsuit just on top of that leg, that's where the leg is going to bend naturally. So it's really nice to kind of highlight that and kind of showcase that as you go. And to make it, you know, a leg, all you got to do is just like erase a little bit of that and just allow the fold of, of the skin to just kind of go up like that. And then the way that the hips work, this could be considered another shape, but um, the way I like to remember how it works is this, think about the hip kind of coming up and over, and then it kind of comes down like that, right, into the, the crotch, crotchal region. Same thing over here, it kind of goes up and then out like that. And that really, really helps me to just, like, get everything lined up, make sure the hips look good, make sure that, you know, Make sure that the leg can actually pivot along this area, right, and like not be broken. And you can, you can, uh, you can exaggerate things as little or as much as you want, especially when you're working in a cartoony style, which is something that I like a lot. But this really helps a lot with um, saying a lot, a lot. Uh, this really helps with, I don't know. There's there's like this little subtle like shape that's happening in this area with the hips and I really like to capture that you know it kind of like comes in like that and it kind of rounds you know it's hard to explain unless you're like painting it it's just that's that's a conscious thing you want to be aware of it's just a little uh, shape that's happening there and then yeah a uh, common mistake that I used to make all the time when I was drawing girls bodies uh, was I would I would draw this down like that and be like okay well their leg is like right there right I guess it could be if it was like going way back there but like I draw their leg like that right but something that I really like to do lately is like really exaggerate these hips like push those out make them look fine and sexy mm hmm hmm I used to draw girls with way bigger chests and strangely enough lately I've been favoring more athletic chests. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just becoming more modest. Or something. I don't know. Whatever it is. Okay, so that's basically how I begin to lay out a figure, right? And it's really, really easy when you think about it in these three shapes. It's like one, you know, two, and then that third one. It's kind of like connects, right? It's like a it's almost like a lobster claw. You can see it right there. It's like a lobster claw latching onto the rest of the body, right? And then here's the, the lady. And and there's the boobs. All right, now we got a sexy lady. <laughs> and yeah, so let's move on to clothes. Clothes is another very, very important part. Um, I usually draw, like whenever I draw girls and drawing clothes on top, I usually just draw them naked first because it's important to know not only the figure, right? And it's fun to draw naked girls, but it's good to know where the clothes are gonna go, right? Because you can't just have clothes sitting on top of like some ethereal magic body, and it's like just composed of magic, just like magically holding the the clothes out where they're supposed to be, like one of those uh, one of those things from World of Warcraft, the magic mummies, magic dust mummies. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't work. We need to draw the naked woman first. Then we must add the clothes. So let me talk a little bit about that. Let me talk about that. So there's a couple things that really lend themselves well to you drawing the body first and then laying the clothes on top. One of which being, say we wanted to, I'll give her some different clothes than the French maid outfit that she's got you know, going on here. Uh, let's give her a... Uh, uh, let's give her like a freaking misty costume. So she'll have like short shorts. She'll have the short shorts going on. 
right? And then the suspender is going up, right? And then the she has like a tank top, right? Misty has a tank top and suspenders. All right, that looks very, very naughty if it were just the suspenders. <laughs> she has a shirt on. Okay, but the point is, is that when you start to lay the clothes on top, you already know where all these pinch points are going to be happening, right? So you know, okay, there's going to be pinching of the fabric happening here. There's going to be pinching of the fabric happening here, right? And then you can start to draw the clothes right on top of the body. And then you know where that fabric is going to lay, and you know where it's going to bunch up, right? You know it's going to bunch up here because of the bending, right? The bending of the torso coming in like that. So there's going to be a pinch point happening there, right? There's going to be uh, this part of the sleeve is going to go right up onto her uh, shoulder there, right? And then very quickly, you can start to lay this out. I'm going to move this suspender over a little bit. One thing that I always mess up is that I always mess up with like things that are symmetrical that are supposed to run across the same part of the body. I end up making it look a little weird. Like just because it's hitting this part of the boob here on this side doesn't mean that it should you should be able to see the same amount of that suspender on the other side. You see what I'm saying there? Don't do this, right? It's like it's hitting, it's basically going right over the center of the boob there. So it needs to go over the center of the boob on the other side, right? So it's actually gonna move more over this way. Okay, dokie. So that's the beginning. Alright. So now we've got some basic pinch points and we've got some basic folds going on. That's really, really that's fine and dandy. I think Misty has more like a belly shirt, but I think I'll just uh we'll, we'll keep it the way it is, you know. It's good. It's good. We'll keep it the way it is. Alrighty then. So now what I like to do is say I'm gonna continue with this sketch. Alright? Let's add some color to it. So I'll just create something behind it. I'll create a layer behind it. And then what we can do is we can begin coloring, right? And this will just go right over top of the body, like that. And then we need a yellow shirt, right? Very, very simple. And another thing that's important is like when you're shading, right? If you were to shade this or quickly shade it, is you want to keep in mind where the edge of like where the chest is, right? Because you're gonna to wanna to, like have a little bit of shading happening in this region, like kind of like that, right? Kind of like that, and kind of bring that down a little bit. And you can see it's really, really easy to experiment and just have some fun. Have some fun with this. Just make sure you capture like the edge of that there. Get that looking about right. Just get the underside of that chest, basically. Remember, don't vacuum seal your clothing to the girl. Don't vacuum seal it. Don't do that. I'll find you. I'll find you if you do that. And I'll give you a swift talking to. Swift kick in the butt. All right, so that's basically how I begin doing stuff like that. I know it's a little bit rushed, but I hope this sheds some light shed some light on things that I like to do. Um, so let's see, where do I want to go from here? Oh, let's talk about the hair. The hair is a big, big thing. Uh, and it's actually something that I've recently figured out, like a really cool trick that you can do to shade and color hair. Nice! Nice. Okay, let's take that away. Okay, so let's talk about finalized French made girl. And basically the things that I went through with that. Let me just sum up very quickly what I did with the clothing on that. And you can see how I laid it over top of the body, right? Because I drew her naked first, right? We learned the importance of drawing naked women today. We didn't think it was important before. Now, you know it's important. Okay, so you'll notice like right here how this little uh, petticoat thing comes down and then it kind of makes a line right there, right? You might be wondering, why is that line there? Well, because we drew the body there, we know that the leg is coming up and it's going to be distorting. It's going to be lifting that fabric there, right? So that's why we get a little bit of distortion happening there as well as 
the line right here. It's going up and over the leg, and then it's going back down, and it's coming around, right? This is really, really fun stuff to do. I like doing this stuff. And then um, the hips and stuff is coming right up like that. Uh, you can see that because this thing, the little poofy sleeve is attached to her shoulder, right? When she lifts it, there's going to be tension on that fabric. And that's what this is right here. It's pulling from right here, and it's going up towards the armpit. You see that right there? Good stuff to remember. And then this line right here represents the change of plane from the chest going like this, and then it kind of pulls over, and then that's why that shadow is there. And you get that little shine right there because it's like a silky fabric. Very good, yes, very good. Very good. And then you can see right here, we go right up into the arm. And really, this is all just, I mean, she's like dancing or something. She could either be like dancing in the air, or she could be like laying down on the ground, all suggestive like, right? And um, really, I when I was drawing this, I just paid attention to kind of what I wanted to see, right? Like what was the flow that was happening here, right? And naturally, I just saw her, her arms kind of like coming up like this and kind of flowing this way, right? And then this one kind of like coming up, flowing that same direction. Same thing here, you know, the, the face comes up and it kind of like goes this way. You know, kind of does one of these things. It goes down and around like that. So I really like to think about a lot of curves uh, when I'm drawing sexy ladies and just flowy images, right? I even do it when I'm drawing like dudes, right, in the comic, right? For a good example, let me actually pull that up really quick. Like in issue two, part three with Tank, right? When he's slicing the zombie's head off right here, that same that same principle is in play here, right? Like, look at this. See the flow that's happening? It's all there's still a lot of curved lines, and it just goes right around, and it just kind of like looks very pleasing to the eye. And not to mention, you know, it's really badass because he's lopping this freaking zombie's head in half. But the same rules apply. And let's see here. So, yes, I said I was going to go into the hair, so let's do that. I want to show you guys a really, really cool way to do hair and uh, for your sketches. Okay, so one thing that I like to do now, basically whenever I draw hair, is for those of you who have checked out my brushes and have them for yourselves, you can, and if you don't have them, you can get them on my DeviantArt site. I actually link it down in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. You can pick that up whenever you like. Whenever you'd like. And what I do is I take this brush, right? And if I'm going to color this hair, uh, I just drew in these lines, right? And these lines just represent where I want the hair to go. Again, just kind of trusting my instinct and just putting these flowy lines where I want them to be. But now, the challenge comes with coloring it, right? So something that's really cool is if you're working with a light background, is just draw in a little bit of color, right, to the point where you think that ribbon of light would go through, right, the highlight of the hair. Then what you do is you just draw the other side of it, right, like that. And then you automatically have drawn the hair and the highlight in it, right? And you can come right through here and do the same thing, right, highlight there, color the other side of it, bam, look at that. Highlight's going to be right there, so I know to color there and there, color there and there. Right? And you can kind of throw in a little bit of darkness wherever you want it. You know, kind of like a little cast shadow thing going on there. Cast shadows happen in there. And that's a really, really cool way to draw hair really quickly. And you can, you can even go back in and, and erase a little bit of the highlight out of it if you want. But uh, that's a really, really fun way to just very quickly lay down the color and have it instantly read as like hair and then the highlight going through it. Same thing right here. We'll draw the hair up, right? And then the highlight is going to be right there. I'll just draw the other end of it. Boom, baby! That's what I'm talking about! And then you have your sexy hair. And with that, um, let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to discuss? Uh, maybe a little bit of the face. Maybe a little bit of the face. Because you guys have been talking about wanting to know a little bit more of my anime style, right? So I'll talk to you a little bit about that and some important things to keep in mind. And as we wind this down, we've been going for about half an hour, I will invite you to cast your questions over the castle walls in the chat to the right, and I'll answer them. And then we'll conclude episode 94.
of the Kay and Kale show. And in the meantime, load up epic outro music. Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and talk about the space. So, big thing you'll notice is that we've got I here, right? And then this other I is just like this little shape back here, right? It's like barely visible. But notice how it just reads as though it's in perspective and get this. It also shows the nose cutting in front of it, right? So it also gives depth to this face. And that's something that I really like to see in anime art, right? Because there's so many, like, just, like, flat-faced people. You know, they turn to the side, and, you know, they got, they got this face like this, right? And then their eye is like, like that. I can't see that because I was covering it up. <laughs> they turn to the side, and they look like this, right? But then they turn front on, and then they're like, they're like this. So, I, I kind of want to, I kind of trying to figure out like where, where what's that in between point? Like, what does it look like when they're kind of like tilting their head up and you know they're kind of like a three fourths angle, or even more than that? And uh, I think the biggest thing that I really like to do is just show the depth of the nose, show the depth of the nose and how it leads up into this eye. And the way that I even came up with this face was. It was back when I was drawing the the actual body, right? The naked body. No, not that one. Oh, I really hope when I drew that you guys could see that. I really hope I did. I don't know if you guys could have. Oh, actually, yeah, you guys did. <laughs> the lobster claw. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, so I actually figured out what this face was going to look like back in this stage. Back when I just drew this really quickly. In fact, it started even simpler than that. It started with... I drew the, the head like this, right? And then I drew this line across, right? So I knew where the eye line was going to go. And I kind of drew in the ear and stuff like that. And just kind of figured it out. And then I drew like this eye. And then I almost like constructed the rest of the eye around it, right? And then I just drew this other shape here, right? And it just looked good. I was like, ooh, okay. I like the way that this shape looks with that one, right? And the nose could come up like that. I just kind of quickly created something, right? I was like, okay, that looks good. And I just kind of built off of that. I think a really, really big part about capturing character and emotion is it just has to do with laying down these really, really fast sketches. Really, really fast sketches. And capturing the emotion in there and then always referring back to it. You always refer back to this. You know, say, you know, if you captured the emotion really well in your sketch, always refer back to that original one. And make sure that as you go and refine it, paint over and do all this stuff, add all this detail, you always have the same emotion as that original sketch. And that will save your life. Alrighty, people. Questions coming in from Arrow96. He's asking, what steps did you take when you decided to start teaching yourself art? This is a great question. And I was actually talking with my friend Colton about this just a few minutes ago before I started the show. He was talking about like, well, how did you how did you start? How did you figure out your style and what you wanted to do? And a big part of figuring out style, really, is just kind of like looking at what the artists that you like are doing, and then just like take that little, like take that little tidbit of whatever it is that you're they're doing that resonates really well with you, kind of like add it to this little Katamari of sorts that will represent your style, that will roll into a world of its own and then get chucked into the sun for the Katamari God. But um, that's basically it. You're just looking at <laughs> things and styles of people that you like. Sometimes I would directly copy people. I mean, when I was first learning anime, all I did was just copy pictures of anime. And then eventually I was like, okay, well, I like the way that this guy did the eyes in this one. I wonder what would happen if I took those eyes and put them over here and you know, I like the way that this person kind of like simplifies the anatomy, but also like captures the how real it is. So I, I kind of brought that over and I put those all together, and then I just started trying out all kinds of different styles. Because I do this, I do painting, I do kind of more realistic, you know, advertising art. And it's very, it's very fun to be versatile, right? Don't feel like you ever have to just lock yourself into one, like thing of study, right? You can be studying realistic, you know, figure drawing on the weekends. And then during the week, you can be working on completely cartoony comics. I think the biggest thing when it comes to learning art is just do what you want. Do what you want. And I can't stress that enough because 
if you just if you're doing what you think you need to do, you're doing what everybody else is doing, and it's not coming from within, you're not going to get very far, right? It has to come from within, and you've got to do what you want because I've talked about this before. Art is a lifestyle, right? Being an artist, being a professional artist, is not a hobby anymore. It's not something that you just, oh yeah, I have to do this every now and then. It is now a part of you. It is your life. And you have to make sure that something that takes up that much of you should be enjoyable. So I believe the journey should be just as fun as the destination. And really, the journey never ends when you're an artist. It's actually a very, very cool and amazing journey. And uh, that's where all the fun and joy is. So I would say just take your time and do what you want. And you will naturally find your way. All righty, people. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys showing up live on Ustream and people on YouTube. That's okay, too. I understand. If you live in Sweden, you can't tune in at 4 o'clock in the morning to watch this. You are excused. But you won't be able to ask questions, right? <laughs> ask, answer questions. I'm really, like, blubbery, kind of, like, stuttery and babbly today. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what the deal is. But that's okay because we're getting better. All right, people. So we're going to end today. I'll see you tomorrow for whatever Wednesday. You guys take care, and I'll see you then.